my name is Bridget Gila. Welcome to Bridge to Wellness. We are here in beautiful San Francisco. As you can see, it's raining, but it's okay. Michael, please tell me what you're doing and, and your purpose out here. Hi, Bridget. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me. My name is Michael Nictaris. I'm a Falun Dafa practitioner. And as you can see, rain or shine, we are out here in Portsmouth Square meditating. The practice is called Falun Dafa, and it's based on the principles of truthfulness, compassion, and forbearance. Mm, very nice. And you, you mentioned a little bit about the history and what's going on in China. Can you just um, d dabble on that a little bit? Absolutely. So the Falun Dafa was made public in 1992, and at that time, Qigong um, was becoming very popular. Once it was made public, it gained popularity very quickly. By the mid-90s, the mid there were approximately 100 million people practicing, and that's according to the Communist Party statistics in China. Now, the Communist Party in China was threatened by this for a couple of reasons. One, they felt that they couldn't control this group of people. And secondly, the principles of truthfulness, compassion, and forbearance do not align with communist ideals, which in essence is an atheist regime and seeks to eliminate anything that is spiritual or anything that has truth to it. Mm -hmm. So in 1999, the practice was banned on July 20th. And from that time on to this very day, people cannot practice freely. My wife, who you can see practicing here, her, her mother was actually had to leave their home. And she moved, eventually gained asylum in Canada where she could practice freely and would not be persecuted any longer. And actually, as of right now, there are even more horrible atrocities going on, such as live organ harvesting, which is essentially they're taking the people as prisoners, blood testing them, matching them with people who are willing to pay an exorbitant amount of money, taking their organs and transferring them at the hospitals. And this is happening today? This is happening as we speak today. And because the Communist Party controls all media in China, it's not spoken about. And because the Communist Party is so intertwined with the economy, people are afraid to speak about it because they don't want their families to, you know, to, to be hurt, you know, to financially to be hurt either. And because the Communist Party controls all media in China, it's not spoken about. And because the Communist Party is so intertwined with the economy, people are afraid to speak about it because they don't want their families to, you know, to, to course, be hurt, you know, course, to financially to be hurt either. This is, this is incredible, and it's honorable for you to be out here. Rain or shine, you're still practicing. As you can see, the, the rain has stopped now, mm -hmm. and sometimes when you have to say something, you have to say the truth, you have to go through that cold, that bitter winter, you know, and I feel the, as you can see, the people here at Taojie, who you met earlier, she's out here every day, rain or shine, because we want people to know what's happening in China, you know, in the future, when it's looked back upon, the atrocities that are going on you know, will really dwarf what happened in, in history. And I'm including what happened in World War II, World War I, etc. It's really, really gruesome. It's very heinous. But the truth is, Falun Dafa is incredibly beautiful. And we, we as, a, as a group, as a team of people, will enlighten people, you know, and through meditation, through truthfulness, compassion, forbearance, you know, bring a new light to the world, something that's very much needed right now. I'm all for it. And I would like to, I would like to experience uh, meditating in the rain. <laughs> sure, I'm absolutely. All for it. Would, yeah. do, you, do you want to do the standing meditation? The standing. Okay, yes, let's definitely. do it.